Open up Sesame. This is the latest and greatest eGPU for gamers by gamers. <laughs> You get a power cable and a Thunderbolt 3 cable, the mini one. There we have it, the Razer Corex Chroma. Gorgeous, gigantic eGPU. And the cool thing about this one is it has four USB-A ports. So it has a larger power supply to account for that. So to set this guy up, all you do, open the latch and pull it out. Let's get rid of this. This is the sizing guide for your GPU and this is the main crutch of it. So we have a new mini PCIe controller over here. This guy gives gigabit ethernet and four USB ports. All right, so to get the world's most powerful eGPU up and running, we're gonna need the world's most powerful GPU. This is the Radeon 7, 16 gigabytes RAM, seven nanometers, more powerful than iMac Pro. 7 nanometers. Look at those grills. Beauty. Radeon. Radeon. You get it? Radeon. So to get your GPU inside this eGPU, you don't even need a screwdriver. You just use your thumb, pull out the tray, always unplugging the power before proceeding. Get the big me GPU and just simply slot it in. And you just push down. Now that's in, just re-slot in that thumb screw. And now it's time to power up the GPU. So this card in particular requires two eight pin connectors and you have it right here. The bottom part is square and the top part has a little bit of a arc on the top and that can match up with this pattern over here. And you just push it down. Put the six pin in first, then I'll line up the two pin and slot them all in together like that. So if you're manic like me and you don't like fan noise, you can just unplug the fan. That's the connector pin right there and just pull out the fan. And this one's for the lights and it plugs in just underneath inside this port over there. Look at that baby go. And it's detected a keyboard. Ah, oh, cool, all right. Check it out right there. I've got my microphone. I've got USB hub plugged in. I've got my camera plugged in. I'm using all four of the ports. So that's, that's pretty damn sexy. And it runs fine on Mac OS. The only thing I can't do is using super fast USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt devices. Those guys have a tendency not to work. Unlike Windows to get the Ethernet drivers working on Mac, you need to install them. So if we look into the USB bus, the Razor Correct Chroma, you can see we've got an AX88179. And if you search that on Google, you come to this lovely page. And regarding Ethernet, I did find that even when you install the macOS drivers, they did suffer from connection dropouts every 30 seconds. However, on Windows, it did work fine. macOS drivers, why are you so crap? Now regarding Windows setup, by default, it doesn't work on the 13 inch MacBook Pro. On Windows, I just get this beautiful blue screen of However, there are guides, check the description below, where you can get it to work. And what it requires to do is install a custom EFI, which disables the integrated graphics of your Intel CPUs. Once you disable that, it will then go ahead and allow you to use the eGPU. Check the description for that. Over on the 15 inch, it does work. This one, it works a lot more out of the box. First reboot into Windows, and then plug in your eGPU. All right, it says we're setting up video controller VGA compatible. Download the drivers for your graphics card. 
So for me, it was AMD, went onto AMD's website, downloaded the drivers, went into the device manager, and just right-clicked on the Microsoft Basic renderer, and hit update driver, and selected the appropriate drivers. Once that is selected, it will install the drivers, and boom, shakalaka, you'll have the eGPU up and running. Radeon 7, my friends, we are scoring. One cravat, crit carry vat, one, one note, is that the discrete graphics won't work on 15 inch. You can still get the display of the screen running. However, it will use the CPU to render out that part. Me personally, I've run into some situations where sometimes I get a black screen over in my 15 inch MacBook Pro. Sometimes I had old drivers from previous graphics cards and all that stuff up and running. So what I needed to do in my case, maybe you might need it too, so it's a useful trick for you is, download AMD's cleanup utility. Go on Google and type in AMD DDU, and that'll allow you to get the AMD cleanup utility. Reboot in safe mode Windows. Go into the restart option, but hold down the shift key when you click restart so you can go through the menu and select booting up in safe mode. And then run that utility there, reboot back to normal Windows, all your AMD software will be gone, and then you can install the latest drivers yourself. Me personally, I'm rocking the 27th of June drivers because I found that they um, actually mine Bitcoin twice as fast as the ones you can get from bootcampdrivers.com. The good thing about getting them from bootcamp drivers instead of AMD's official drivers is that the ones on bootcamp drivers can actually install out of the box with a setup utility. So what you can also do is install the bootcampdrivers.com version of the drivers and then update to the latest version of the drivers by downloading it from AMD's website, extracting it over to your desktop, and then going into device manager, right-clicking, update driver, and selecting the drivers there. That way you get to keep the AMD settings application as well as the latest drivers and all that kind of good stuff. All right. That is it, Mac and Windows. Mac just works out of the box, be it with some driver issues with USB and Ethernet. And uh, Windows has a bit of issues, but overall, once you get it up and running and you go through all the battles, it is a very sexy setup. And just one more tip on the battles on Windows, on my 15-inch MacBook Pro, I always use the right side for the eGPU, and I boot into Windows with no USB devices attached other than the eGPU on my right side and I use the two left side USBs for additional accessories. I've tried using the eGPU on the left side, however when I do that I can only use one of the USB ports on the right side. Of course it depends on what kind of accessories you're using but for me I found that using the right side just works better than the left side and always boot without any USB drives plugged in and that's it. Windows, Mac, all these little issues, however, it's hella fun, hella sexy, and the performance is incredible. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below.